Uh, I want to turn to a couple of folks who certainly know more than I do. Melanie Sloan, Executive Director of Citizens Responsibility and Ethics. She's in Washington, and Solomon Weisenberg, who is a former federal prosecutor. Uh, prosecutor's perspective on the case, then we'll get into the rest of this, uh, Solomon. Well, I don't have a prosecutor's perspective on the case because uh, I, I believe the case should never have been brought. But isn't that your, there's a perspective, elaborate. You know, I don't understand why why the case was brought because this is something that's never even been considered a regulatory violation in the whole history of the Federal Election Commission. And now they're trying to say yeah. it's a criminal law. That to me, that is fundamentally unfair. I, I don't think your viewers fully understand how widespread the agreement is in the community of lawyers who handle this kind of work that this isn't even necessarily a regulatory violation. There's really outrage at this prosecution, even though nobody particularly yeah. likes Senator Edwards. Melanie, your perspective. I think that's exactly right. Uh, I, too, am a former federal prosecutor, and I can't begin to understand how this case was yeah. brought. And there are literally no campaign finance lawyers who have said that this is a good, strong case. Right. This is incredibly complicated, and the judge uh, has refused really to recognize that. So let me give you my thesis, because I agree with both of you, and I've never prosecuted a case in my life, but I feel like I've walked into a zoo of madness for a culture that's lost its mind. But I, here's my best explanation for it, Solomon, and I want to see whether you, whether you buy it. It is widely known, remember you had 196 people providing 80% of the money in secret for both presidential candidates. You have the widest spread infestation of gerrymandering, of closed primaries, of secret money in politics in the history of American politics. Everybody knows it. No one is doing anything about it. The entire banking system proved the power of money, and yet even the bankers don't get it. There's not a single one. I got lists and lists and lists. But there is an advantage to a highly um, titillating, a morally infuriating, it's just you're like you make, you know, his wife had cancer, and how, what, they, they he got a mistress, what's wrong with this man? And it provides a spectacular distraction for a false attempt to appear to be serving justice at a time when the underlying political culture is perhaps the most corrupt it's ever been. Here's my problem with that theory. This investigation began under the previous administration in a prosecutor's office that was, that was run by a very conservative individual, a, a good man who I like. I just think that he made a mistake here. So you're, it's not that your theory is irrational, but unless it was uh, hijacked by the new administration, no, I, yeah. I just don't think it, 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 well, it I'm, not, I'm not suggesting it from a conspiracy standpoint that, well, that the indictment will do that. I can't speak to the nature of the indictment than anybody else. But the, the benefit of this case is that it is that it allows that. Mel, your thoughts? Look, it, you've got this case going, and the other big case the Department of Justice has going on is the prosecution of Roger Clemens for lying about using steroids. Are these really the biggest problems <laughs> facing Americans? This is what the Justice Department should be using its scarce dollars at a time when it's got a hiring freeze and budget cuts? It's ridiculous. Come on, we all pay taxes. They got to do something, Melanie. So, what is your thesis? So, uh, forget what, you, why on earth are we in this situation, in your view, Melanie? And then Solomon, you get your answer, and we'll call this a conversation. I think they're doing it because everybody hates John Edwards. His behavior was completely despicable. And I think that the Democratic administration was frankly afraid that if they didn't pursue this case, once a holdover Republican U.S. attorney had indicated he wanted to prosecute the case, they would have been tarred with trying to protect a Democratic politician. And I think nobody, there's no Democrat who wants to protect John Edwards, and they figured he could afford to defend himself. He has a lot of right. money, and that's a really sad state of affairs for the Justice Department. So let him fry, let him fry. He's rich anyway. What do you say, Solomon? Why, what do you think is going on? I, I think the people who originally prosecuted this case and investigated this case believe that it's a crime and certainly believe that it should be a crime. But again, the problem is we all believe in fair notice. The rule of law, essential to the rule of law is fair notice. No one ever gave the senator any notice that conduct like this would violate the, would violate the criminal law. Not only that, but to, if, I, if I understand what you said earlier, Solomon, that precedent 
conventional precedent and conventional cultural practice and conventional legal practice was to endorse this very behavior at the very least as not being a criminal violation. Is that correct? Well, well not to endorse it, but nobody had ever suggested that these kinds of contributions constitute contributions intended to influence a federal election campaign, uh, presidential election, and those are the magic words, the eight magic words. Yeah. And, and, at the and end, further, yeah, you know, it's also true that the FEC knew about the contributions, knew about the payments to Riel Hunter, and they didn't think that they were campaign contributions that needed to be reported. So there you had the agency charged with enforcing campaign finance law, not thinking this was any kind of a problem, and the Justice Department taking an entirely opposite yeah. view, uh, which is really hard to understand, especially as I, Justice I like has said yeah. before, they, they have to do what the FEC says. I, I feel like we're stuck between an emotional world of whatever reality is and the unreconciled offensive nature of the behavior and the desire to take that offensive behavior and correlate it to some form of punishment that people are trying to invent as a complete divergence from whatever the, the, the precedent of law is, which is a scary uh, event, actually, uh, regardless of your thoughts on anybody's uh, actions, uh, makes me nervous. So the, the whole, I mean, I think everybody in this country would think, well, hang on, you can just make this up as you want. Uh, Melanie Sloan, Solomon Weisenberg, thank you for helping me understand more than I did before I talked to you, and hopefully my audience as well. Appreciate it.